All right, so without further ado, let's start discussing a bit about the, uh, the services. We will start with the core infrastructure where we have the compute service. Basically, here you'll be able to create and uh, provision virtual machines or bare metal instances, which are like a physical, let's say, super host. You have a very high performance there on the, on the bare metal machine. You, you can also use like uh, configurations for your uh, virtual machines and auto scaling configuration as well. Basically, you'll be able to scale horizontally. For example, if you have a scenario where you need to we have a higher load on a specific period like holidays or something like that, uh, you would like to use one of these uh, configurations because it will be able to auto scale it for you to create uh, additional virtual machines in order to to balance your um, your load that you have on this uh, on these virtual machines and therefore, uh, the experience for your, let's say, for your end user will be will be seamless, and um, you'll you'll have no issue on that on that part. Then you have various options for storage. You have the block storage first, which uh, works, uh, let's say, as the partitions in uh, in your Windows machine, for example, uh, because they use the iSCSI port, and uh, you use this type of storage in order to attach additional storage to your virtual machines, for example, or or other instances. Uh, then you have the object storage, where um, th this will be mainly used for backing up your databases, but it can also be used as, uh, let's say, a cloud solution, a cloud storage solution. You can create buckets and you can upload your media and files into those buckets and just share the link with your participants. Uh, then you have the file storage, which is mainly used for sharing purposes due to its uh, NFS port. All right, then uh, a very big category here, which is called the networking. I think this and with the identity side of it will be the, the most important when you, you know, when you start your journey to the, to the Oracle Cloud. So let's take a quick look on the networking side. All right, so here we have uh, an example on how to set and connect your on-premises uh, network with your cloud, right? So. You have here on this uh, on this rectangle you have the virtual cloud network, so your network in the in the cloud with a public subnet where you can uh, create some virtual machines. You can uh, attach any any service to this to this public subnet. Then you will allow the virtual machine in your public subnet to access the internet, and uh, vice versa. Then in order to you know try to connect this cloud environment to your on-premise environment, you're gonna need uh, a DRG a dynamic routing gateway, which will be your cloud connector. And for your on-premises connector, you will need this uh, customer premises equipment or CPE. Basically, you're gonna put here on the CPE, you're gonna need to put an, uh, a network endpoint from your on-premises environment. And on the DRG, you just need to attach it to your virtual cloud network or VCN for short. And between those two connectors, you just need to add uh, a VPN, a tunnel. We have an option for, uh, for the VPN, a free option, which is called the IPsec VPN. You're gonna have the first 10 terabytes for, for each month uh, out of charge for the outbound data. You don't need to pay anything for, for the outbound at this point. If you go over those 10 terabytes per month, yes, you, you'll be charged, but you're gonna still have a lot of storage available for, uh, for your projects and, uh, and for your environment. Then you have the Oracle databases. You have the autonomous data warehouse and the autonomous transaction processing. This is our latest flagship at the moment. Uh, it is basically a database with machine AI learning capabilities. You, you'll be able to create a database in less than 15 minutes and be, be fully prepared to load your queries and just uh, start using it in less than 15 minutes. And the, the great thing is that it is fully managed by Oracle and uh, it will be able to self-patch itself, self-tune, uh, and if needed, it can self-repair and it also have uh, a self-security options. All right. If you want a more, let's say, traditional uh, approach for the database, you can always uh, deploy a classical, uh, a classical database system on a virtual machine, on a bare metal, or on exadata. You know, we have a lot of options for uh, data lake. You know, data in the AI, as well as uh, you know other databases that are not used uh, on a physical basis. The Apex application development, which you can use with the, uh, with the autonomous transaction processing. Then you have the solutions and platform services. Some of these services, like I said in the beginning, 
they moved from generation one to generation two and at the moment are now native. For example, analytics and application integration uh, would be a good example. You also have this uh, resource manager, which uh, it will help you in creating, uh, let's say, automating any process that you want in, in, a, in Oracle Cloud environment. You're going to use Terraform scripts or stacks or jobs, or you can also use some of the uh, some of the scripts that uh, we already created for you, and we have them available for you in the marketplace.